suffering in the atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus we bless you for these your people who have gathered to be fed Lord God to that have gathered to be poured into who have gathered Lord God to experience your move your manifest glory in deliverance in the name of Jesus oh God hallelujah we welcome you here God we we thank you for your presence here right now we bless you for your glory your glory is resting on the house right now we thank you for it hallelujah we magnify you for the joy we magnify you for the freedom we bless you for the peace we thank you for yokes being destroyed we break bless you for chains being destroyed god in the name of jesus your glory your glory your glory continue to fill this house and we'll be careful to honor you we bless you praise we praise you hallelujah hallelujah we thank you right now we thank you right now for free flow of your spirit we thank you right now for victory hallelujah in the name of jesus anoint your vessels on this day as bishop lord god zimmerman and as prophet richards and lord god this ministry from true fam and these saints that have traveled lord god across the highways to be here with us we thank you lord god for your anointing resting upon their teaching on today lord there are some who have come looking for a breakthrough lord and by faith right now we know it's already here for them hallelujah we bless you lord god right now we praise you for results right now we bless you right now for breaking lord god the breaker anointing is upon this house we bless you right now we thank you right now hallelujah for what the people are going to experience because lord god of your presence in the name of jesus be glorified be magnified in Jesus name amen amen and amen hallelujah come on somebody put some victorious hands together if you are walking in victory if you are claiming victory come on celebrate like you're claiming victory right now I know it's only 10 15 amen but you have a 10 15 victory praise wrapped up in you come on somebody give it to him 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 give it to him, it to him. hallelujah I've come to magnify the name of the Lord. I'm excited. I'm excited for what the Lord is going to do on these next couple of days. Amen. We are so blessed. Amen. And honored to have you, each and every one of you, here with us on today. We honor you. Lady Smith, God bless you. So good to see you. Amen. Bishop, in his absence, we thank the Lord for you all being here. And for everyone who has traveled near and far to be with us, the Lord is going to show himself faithful. You just you just wait amen we are excited we are going to um, um, get started in just a few more moments we want to just make sure the atmosphere is set we want to uh, turn the podium over to Bishop uh, Zimmerman in just a moment but we want to make sure that you're ready to receive now I'm going to tell you what you can take your seats you can take your seat in the presence of the Lord make sure you have pencil and paper ready make sure you have amen you are going to be getting some information amen listen the man of God has revelation to share with you let me make sure I um, uh, say this so that you can hear me the revelation that he is sharing with you is only information to you until God reveals it to you and so you have to sit and receive in a, with a prayerful spirit and say Lord transfer his revelation so that I can receive this revelation in the name of Jesus hallelujah amen so make sure you take copious notes we want to amen um, we're going to um, uh, start off with <clears throat> pastor Christian Zimmerman amen they have traveled all the way from Maryland to be with us uh, along with the um, saints from DC if you've come over from uh, true fam if you're part of the true fam family uh, can you wave your hand we we see any, any other true fam here with us? Okay, amen, 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 amen. So great to see a prophet uh, Richards and uh, Erica. They're going to, our prophetess Erica, going to be sharing later. Amen, amen, amen. I 
I'm excited. I'm excited. We have begun our streaming. We should be streaming now. And so we want to get right into our teaching. And so at this time, we are going to ask that you would please receive, amen, Pastor Christian Zimmerman with a wonderful, wonderful round of applause. Come on, somebody put your hands together for her. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Now, if you were giving me a hand praise, that's all right. But give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes. Thank you, you and you, for coming out this morning. We have a packed field day. So get ready to receive. Get ready to receive. Get ready to receive. Okay, so if you have the QR code, let's start with that. Does everyone have the QR code? Within the QR code, you can scan on your phone to get the program, and you'll be able to follow along with Bishop and with um, Apostle Wayne. Is there anyone that needs the QR code at this time? Okay. If you can keep your hands raised... They will bring the code around. Amen. Amen. Are you guys excited? I'm excited to see what God is going to do today. It is going to be an amazing, amazing weekend. So we're just truly excited that the Lord is meeting us here. So grateful. All right. Bishop is going to be up first. So I would like to... Um, read his bio. Once everyone has everything up, you'll be able to read along. Is everyone ready? Amen. Amen. Bishop Eric Zimmerman is a native of Cleveland, Ohio. He graduated from South High and attended Kent State University. Bishop was baptized and received the infilling of the Holy Ghost at the age of 14. At the age of 26, he accepted the call on his life and preached the good news of the saving power of Jesus Christ. In 1986, Bishop Zimmerman relocated to Washington, D.C. and joined Grace Apostolic Church, where he was a member for 20 years. In 2006, he joined and served under the leadership of Pastor Victor L. Furr, who is the pastor of Victorious Life of Faith. In March 2013, Bishop Zimmerman responded to the mandate given by the Holy Spirit to establish True Foundation Apostolic Ministries in Cleveland, I'm sorry, in Clinton, Maryland. His vision was to provide a church assembly where true love reaches beyond the walls. Bishop Zimmerman's ministry focuses on reaching souls while equipping them with the power of Jesus Christ and teaching them foundational biblical knowledge. His ministry provides a safe space for young people to encounter God in a relevant but practical teaching environment. Bishop Zimmerman has a shepherd's heart, and he sure does. For those seeking to establish an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, in addition to those who desire to be reconciled back to the kingdom of God. Pastor Zimmerman is an effective and godly leader who held various church leadership positions such as youth pastor, praise team leader, associate minister, and brotherhood president, and he also served as youth president on the local, state, national levels. Pastor Zimmerman was elevated to the office of bishop on January 20th in 2018 at the Bible Way Church. Pastor Zimmerman is, I'm sorry, Bishop Zimmerman is a devoted family man who values and understands the balance of family and church. He met Lady Christian at Rehoboth Baptist Church while he was performing in a theater production. He was also God, guys. <laughs> in any event, he married Lady Christian, and they are parents of four beautiful daughters, Desiree, Charmaine, Erica, and Mia, who 
are also extremely involved in the ministry. Can we give Bishop Eric a hand clap? Before he comes, I did want to share with you the things that he will be discussing on today. So, Bishop Zimmerman will be discussing the Jezebel spirit. He will be discussing witchcraft, the tortoise spirit, the mermaid spirit. He will talk about teamwork, how teamwork makes the dream work. And uh, Bishop, I'm sorry, uh, maybe I'm speaking prophetically, but Apostle Wayne will um, also be speaking later and we'll talk about what he will be discussing. So at this time, if you could stand to your feet as Bishop Zimmerman comes forth and greet him with a hearty amen and a hand clap. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, put those hands together one more time. And that was okay if that was for the president, but we're talking about Jesus. Come on, somebody. Yes. Way back in the day, and so so that you will know, I, I grew up in this church right here. Came here when I was about five, six years old, um, I came here. We moved here to Cleveland, and uh, this is where, you can be seated, this is where we, I received my foundation, right here. Um, it was, back then, it was Apostolic Faith Tabernacle. And um, so walking in this building has given me a lot of memories. Amen. How many of you glad to be here? Okay, look, let's tell somebody it's good to see you. <clears throat> so it's good to see you. And I want you to return and say it's good to be seen. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm here. So we thank and praise God. Can we give the Lord another hand praise for the angels of this house? <laughs> Amen. Pastor and prophetess, the Christians. Thank and praise God for them for opening up their doors um, so that we can do this. There are some more that are on their way uh, as well. Some, some got in kind of late, but they're traveling. They, they're coming. I was texting. You know, I'm going to pass them over. Where you at? ETA. <laughs> uh, but they're on their way. But I think in, uh, those from True Friend, raise your hands that I hear so far. Okay. I bless. We got some more that's coming. So first, it's good to see uh, Mumbua here from Chicago. Raise your hand, Mumbua. We anointed woman of God. Savannah from Detroit, Michigan. Raise your hand, Savannah. Yes. Amen. And those that drove a, a distance to be here. Uh, is, is there a pastor, another pastor here? Or first lady? Who? You're a pastor? Yeah. He said that real quick. I'm, I'm not a pastor. Don't you put that on me. Don't, don't do that right now. Let me, let me slow walk me through this. <laughs> We're good to see you there for the Hester, Hester, Charles Hester and his uh, wife from Dayton, Ohio. So good to see them as well. Amen. And First Lady Lisa Smith. Amen. Bishop Neal will be here shortly. My good friend Matthew. Ray J. Matthew, I grew up with him. Yeah. We, we got in trouble without getting in trouble. I know that makes no sense, right? We got into trouble, but we was always the ones like, I'm not going to go that far. Right? But that's, that's, that's my man right there. Uh, since we were little. We used to hang on these streets in that back alley where we took a, a, a wheel of a, of a bicycle, took the spokes out, and banged it on the pole. That was our basketball hoop. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all spoiled these days. Y'all know nothing about the old refrigerator box that became a clubhouse. Can I preach it up in here today? Yeah, yeah. We makeshift tree houses. Yeah, we, we had fun back then. Now they just on video games getting possessed with demons. <laughs> Amen. But some of the things that you will hear today is going to be shocking. You're going to be like, they are crazy. There's no way. 
But I want to tell you this, the things that we experience is that we have experienced is not hearsay. They are things that we experience. They are things that we see. There's some things that you see on TV that you think that, oh, wow, that's television. Television, uh, Hollywood hears from the camp of the enemy. When they put their movies out, when they put their music out, is because they're hearing from the enemy on what to put out to get you and to get your children. So some of the things that we're saying are not far-fetched at all. At any time, um, you, I'll hold a session for questions as well. But the main part I'm going to talk about um, is, <coughs> excuse me, um, effective leadership in the ministry from a spiritual warfare standpoint. Because many of us go to church. How many of y'all ever been church hurt before? Raise your hand. All the church hurt folk. She's been almost everybody. <laughs> Right, I've been job hurt. Come on, somebody. Been marriage hurt, right? Siblings hurt. I've been hurt. All kinds of hurt. I've been, uh, Jesus, subway hurt, bus hurt. All of it, you know. And people look at the church as they supposed to be loving. They supposed, they supposed, they supposed. Listen, jacked up folk come to church. People who need deliverance come to church. People need to be set free. They come to the house of God because it is a spiritual what? Hospital. Right? You don't go to the hospital when you're well or when you're good. You go when you're jacked up. Right? How many of y'all are jacked up? I was trying to see some honest people up in here, right? You know, because we don't have it all together. Right? I'm, I'm a bishop, and, I'm, and I still got to die daily. Every day, I got to crucify this flesh for something. Come on, somebody. So let me tell you something. I have not arrived just like you have not arrived. We all have issues. We all have things that we deal with. But what we're trying to point out to you today is this. With your saved, your anointed self, and your gifted self, you can still be bound with something for years and not even realize that it's been there for years, not even realize it's been there since childhood. Not even realize that it came from your sweet mother. That your dad that took care of you and provided for you. Not even realize that something came down the line. You're going to hear some things today. Write them down. Take them in. But the word of the Lord says, let a man examine himself. So this isn't about, oh my God, I knew it. I knew she had a Jezebel spirit. No, look at you. Get yourself together. What did they say? Check yourself before you Come on, somebody. Y'all been in church. Okay. So, getting people to work with the vision that's set forth in the pastor. So, understand that no pastor is perfect. Leaders are not perfect. We are a work in progress. Right? We get frustrated just like you get frustrated. We don't feel like coming to church just like you don't feel like coming to church. The only difference is we can't stay home. <laughs> we got to come to church. We got to be there. We got to stand in this pulpit and preach even when we have darts thrown at us that are sticking in our back and knives. The leaders have to lead even though they're wounded because they're warriors, but they lead when they're wounded and when they're hurt sometimes because they have to function inside the ministry. And that is the job of the enemy to run you out of the position and the place that God has set you in. I'm going to preach today. I may hurt some feelings. Is that all right? So to understand, especially for those leaders in the room, and I want everybody to hear how to get your staff to work with you as a leader in the church or as a pastor. You may have people under you, right? Or you, you may be that person that's under somebody. And so listen to this so you'll know how to operate so that you won't bring havoc to the ministry. So you first must understand the spirit behind the scenes that is working against the ministry. Right? And y'all can say amen sometime. Y'all help me get through here quicker. All right? So when God is moving and shifting, if you don't understand what's going on spiritually, you're going to miss the flow. You're going to be totally out of tune. You're going to be out of spiritual rhythm. You're not going to be able to decipher anything that happens within the ministry because you are out of sort. Right? Black folk are emotional creatures as it is. How many of y'all real emotional? We will drop at a dime. We will get mad. Someone go from zero to 60 
in three seconds. We're emotional people. And so, <laughs> don't be pointing at you. <laughs> and so the main thing is this. You have to watch your emotions. The enemy manipulates your emotions to get you to wreak havoc inside of a ministry because you're mad at something or you're in your feelings about something, right? Y'all know how many cussing saints we got? Oh, I'm about to drop this mic. Right? And a lot of say, work in progress, right? Sometimes that word slip out. You know, sometimes not just one word, sometimes it's a sentence that comes out. Right? Because somebody done took you over the top. Right? We were dealing with a young lady, a casting a demon out of her, and she cussed Wayne out really bad. That demon, oh, he used some words. And so Wayne was, Wayne had to bind the spirit and told the spirit, you will no longer cuss at me. You're going to shut your mouth. <laughs> You're not cussing at me no more. Right? And guess what? Shut up. He didn't cuss no more. But spirits are smart. Don't think they dumb because she gave him the finger. <laughs> ah. Yeah. And so these things, because we're emotional, they come out. And some of us, that's why the Bible says, I die daily. I don't care who you are, pastors, teachers, prophets, preachers, you die daily. Somebody say, I got to die daily. Right? So you cannot fight the unseen world if you're not walking in a spiritual space. You can't fight it because you don't see it with your natural eyes. So you don't, you don't have a clue what's going on. Right? So Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. It's going to be your favorite scripture the rest of your life. Ephesians 6, 11 through 13 says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the what? Wiles of the devil. What is his wiles? His tricks, his traps, his setups, his schemes, his network. How many of you know that the enemy has a whole network? Some of y'all, he has a network set up specifically for you. They're everywhere. Some of them, they're over your auntie's house, and when you get there, they're there. They're over your granddad's house, and when you get there, they're over there. Right? They're on your job. There's a whole network set up to frustrate your entire day because he does not want you praying. Right? And uh, the 12th verse says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Notice it talks about four levels of demonic activity that you have to battle with. Principalities, my God, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. So understand the hierarchy in the air, in, in the air, in the heavens, is you have uh, demonic forces that dwell in that space. You have foot soldiers that are on this earth that has hierarchy, right? Woo! It's this, this is how serious it is. So when you're binding up stuff, you got to bind it up there, got to bind it up here, right? This involves understanding and knowing how to maneuver through what is called principalities and personalities. Write that down. Principalities and personalities. Principalities' powers are high-ranking spirits that have visited some of you. Not just a little foot soldier, not just a little old demon. This is a high-ranking spirit that has visited you. Why did he come to see me? Because your assignment is a threat to him. Whatever God has assigned it to you to do is a threat, and he, he can't send a little foot soldier after you. He has to send somebody with authority who command legions underneath them, and that's why he sent them to you. How many of you are prophetic in this room? Raise your hand. How many of you are seers? Okay, come on now. Yes. And so we're often attacked because of your spiritual insight. Because he does not want you sharing. And this is important. When you're in a ministry and you see something in the ministry, you must go talk to leadership. Preferably, you go talk straight to the pastor. Because it could be something about one of the leaders. 
So you need to go talk to the pastor. I saw a vision. I saw something on them. I need to know if I'm correct. I'm giving you what I've seen. How many of you are prophetic dreamers? Yes. I had a prophetic dream about something. I need to give this to you. I need to tell you because I don't know everything about what it means, but I need to give it to you so that the pastor can take it and decipher it. So in our ministry, I put together a prophetic dream unit. I don't know how many of them in there now, but the dreams that come in are all in sync. They have them on different dreams on different nights. Sometimes they have them a week ago. They put them in there and they're all in sync. Sometimes their dreams about the government, what's happening in the government. Sometimes about what's happening in the church. Sometimes there's about where we were getting ready to go. One of the dreams told us what we were coming to in Cleveland here. That was on Monday. Described the, the color of the walls of the church and named the particular spirit that, that was going to meet us here when we got here. So last night we were here in prayer and that particular spirit it was seen, right? Prophetic dream. When you're a part of, when you're a prophetic dreamer, you always have to say something to leadership when you have a dream. Somebody say, let, let me say this. Look at your neighbor and tell them, get out of your fear. Get out of it. You got to spill it out, right? So, so this involves understanding and knowing principalities and personalities. Personalities, people, people, principalities. Demons, personalities, people. I got to understand your personality, right? The natural realm and the spirit realm, people and demons. If you don't, demons will have you thinking that all people hate you. And let me say that to leadership too. Demons will have you thinking that everybody is against you, that nobody likes you. When you preach, nobody got up and clapped. Nobody celebrated you. And now you and your feelings, they don't like me. I'm going to find me another church. I'm church hurt now. I'm going someplace else. Because they, a prophet, and do you start quoting scripture? A prophet is without, without honor in his own country. You looking for scripture to say, no, maybe they enjoyed you, but maybe you took them in a place where they're thinking now. Where they're meditating on what you said. And they're like, man, that was powerful. Because we're so used to, ah, God said that. We, we're so used to that. Right? And when somebody sit down and talk to you, you're like, no, nah, that, that wasn't, they didn't preach. No, we're used to emotionalism. Right? So get out of your feelings. The spirit of paranoia is real. Mm, preach, Bishop. I sure will. It will have you thinking nobody likes you. Everybody's against you. And that's not the case. Be careful with your language. If I come to you and say, if I come to you, First Lady Lisa, and say, you know, people are saying, people are saying I don't pinpoint anything so now your mind goes to a place where, where everybody's saying this no it was one person but because I don't want to identify them I say people are saying that are some of the worst words you can bring to leadership I don't want to say names well you shouldn't have came to me then preach bishop <laughs> give me the name I'll keep it confidentially, but I need to know what I'm dealing with. This is how you snuff out the plans of the enemy, y'all. Right? So, I had a vision. I had the vision within my leadership, and so I gathered them together to give them this exercise, right? So while in class, I wrote down on the board all this. I said, I need you to write down on the board everybody's strengths and weaknesses. I want you to write your strengths and your weaknesses, and I need you to be honest. If you got a temper problem, I need you to put it down here. Right? If you can't stop watching certain things on TV, I need you to put it down here. Right? Strength and weaknesses. Let's go. So it showed each and every one of them how vulnerable the team is. Right? What just happened? Oh, okay. It shows them how vulnerable each other are because we all have vulnerable places, right? You're anointed, you're gifted to do what you do, but you got anger issues. You're anointed to do what you do, but at 2 o'clock at night when HBO is on, you're looking at things you shouldn't be looking at, and you can't turn it off. Can I be real? I'm trying to keep it PG, but not PG, right? You're anointed, but you walk in a spirit of, of inadequacy. 
I deal with, I, I'm not good enough. Or you deal with the spirit of fear of failure. I'm going to fail, so I'm not going to even try. But you're gifted to do it. Right? And so I wanted them to see each other's weakness. So now understand that someone that deals with inadequacy, you see why they push so hard to be seen. I want to be accepted. I want people to accept me. I want them to understand me. I want them to know me. So I push, 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 push. And when I push, it seems like I'm always trying to be out in front. It seems like I'm always trying to be seen. No, I'm dealing with inadequacy because of what happened in my bloodline, what happened, what my father didn't do for me, what my mother didn't do for me because I didn't get enough affection at home. So now... I'm looking for that affection and approval in everybody else. I'm looking for validation. Can I tell somebody something, miss? God is the only one that can validate you. Nobody can validate you like God can. Right? That's his job. So there are four spirit, spirits that will affect the house if not recognized. Right? That I want to briefly touch on. And Wayne, when he comes, Prophet Wayne, when he comes, he can touch on some, some more uh, of these and some other things too, all right? So there are four that particularly attack the house of God. It comes after leadership. It comes after the church. What is the number one tool that the enemy uses to kill a ministry? Division. Division. Divide and what? Conquer. If I divide you, I can conquer you. That goes for anything. That goes for siblings. That goes for a marriage. That goes for a church. It goes for your job. It goes for all of it. Divide and conquer. Right? One of the most, one, and, and the first one I'm going to talk about is that doggone spirit of Jezebel. Woo, write it down, y'all. And listen, don't get in your feelings. Right? So the Jezebel spirit always seeks to dwell in leadership. Always. That's where it wants to be. Simply put, Jezebel spirit is one of Satan's high ranking, more intelligent demons, if not the smartest kind of demon in his kingdom. And with this being said, much more intelligent than many of the other low ranking demons, the more intelligent than they will be. This makes this type of spirit much more evil, cunning, and harder to deal with once it moves in and attaches itself to a person. Can I preach up in here today? It will cause a lot of trouble and destruction if it is not quickly dealt with and cast out. It is a total control freak. And it is very good at manipulating and getting people to do its evil bidding. Woo, Jesus. If you are not getting the staff to work together nine times out of ten, there is a Jezebel in the midst working and operating and moving. Right? So that is the first thing you must identify. Right? Is there a Jezebel spirit in my midst? This spirit is very slick. It comes into leadership. It sits. It's gifted. It loves to be in the prophetic realm. I'm going to preach up in here today, right? They dress a certain way. Certain clothes. The clothes have to be nice and tailored and flamboyant. and Woo! Nails got to be done. That hair got to be dead. That front lace is kicking. The makeup tight. Right? And Jezebel can be a man too. Right? But that that everything is tight because they have to have a, a, a package. They got to present themselves like I have arrived. And they come and they're very slick and they try to get close to leadership. I just want to help you. No, I can help you do this. Blah, blah, blah. And once you let them in, then they'll begin to try to take over. Jezebel sets up kingdoms inside of a ministry. It pulls people in. It gets people on the side. It stops making phone calls in the background. What you think about this? How did it look to you? Did you agree with what was said? 
Ooh, preach, bishop. But did you like that? <laughs> it's very slick. Start rubbing elbows with people in the ministry. All the whole time, it's really gaining followers to turn them against what the pastor is saying. It works sort of like with witchcraft. Because when it opens up his mouth, it starts saying things to deter you from doing certain things. You go in the second service, I'm not going. I don't like that other church they're going to, so I'm not going to go. And then what happens? You're like, you know what? I don't think I'm going either. Do you know that's like casting a spell on somebody to influence them to go against the grain of what is being taught in the ministry? <laughs> that's witchcraft. Right? And that's, what, that's how the Jezebel spirit operates. The Jezebel spirit will push people out of the ministry so that it can have more control. So it will cause people to leave. Good people. It goes after the bulldogs of the ministry. Y'all gonna make me preach up in here. There are bulldogs in the ministry that are designed to protect the pastor. First lady. Those are bulldogs. You know, the shepherd has bulldogs to help with the sheep. Because sometimes the sheep want to run all over the place. And the bulldogs, they're loud. Get back in line. I saw you. You know, they're the Peters of the ministry. You know, that, that's, they say, but they're not all the way. <laughs> but they're gifted, but they're there to protect the house. Why? Because they have the best interest of the house, and they're going to protect the house. And so I call them spiritual bulldogs. They're their place. Jezebel will try to run them out so that this spirit can have full control of the house. Ooh, Jesus. And Jezebel is so hard to figure out because Jezebel speaks in tongues. It's been baptized in Jesus' name. Jezebel prophesies. Jezebel dreams prophetically too. She does all these things. I'm saying she, but it could be a he too. All these things it does, but you will never, never know it until you wake up one day and the damage is done. And you look up, and 20 people don't walk out of the church. And you're like, what happened? And the thing about people is they will never tell the pastor what's going on. <laughs> they won't go to the pastor. They'll go to somebody else. And next you know, the pastor's like, yo, where you at? Just started at 11 o'clock. <coughs> I don't know. Now you're lying. And now you're missing all these services and then come to find out two years later the pastor found out, well, you know, such and such and such. Well, if you would have came to me, I would have corrected that. But you listened to Jezebel and Jezebel pulled you out. Death and life is in the power of the what? Watch what you say. Prophets, watch what comes out of your mouth. You hold weight in the spirit realm. What comes out of your mouth is critical. When you put your mouth on the ministry, whew, to whom much is given, much is required. Right? When you open up your mouth and put it on the ministry, just like you get a prophet's reward, you'll get a prophet's discipline. Watch what comes out of your mouth against the leadership of the house. Somebody shout amen. All right, I'm going to move quickly through. The next one I want to talk about real quick is witchcraft. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, that was a drop K moment right there, wasn't it? Witchcraft, real quick. I'm going to deal with these things, right? Um, the, one part of the witchcraft is the real witch. How many of you know that real witches exist? Let me see your hands. Real witches exist that practice actual witchcraft. Right, we got some people in the ministry who grew up in witchcraft. They practiced it. They went to satanic church for seven hours, and we complain about an hour and a half of church. They went for seven hours practicing. They fasted for months, and we complain when the pastor say, "We're gonna fast all week." Come on, in on a holiday party. They fast like nobody's business. Satanic church, they're always in church praying. They are unified. They come together to see what they can break 
in their region, right? When we were on our way, and I told him this last night, when we were on our way to Cleveland, my, and, and the prophet is here too, that song was on our way to Cleveland. When we entered, was it Cleveland or Ohio? That we entered, it was Cleveland. It was Cleveland, I said Ohio last night. But when we hit Cleveland, we saw the pentagram. The prophet saw that it was big, the pentagram. You know what that is? The circle with the star in the middle of it. We saw it, as soon as we hit Cleveland, biggest day. That let us know that the witches were saying, you coming into our territory. Cleveland is inundated with witchcraft. It is everywhere. Everywhere that you go, there are witches in Cleveland. To where you least expect it is, it's there. When you go into nail salon to get your nails did, when she said, what color are you on? <laughs> <laughs> There are witches working on your nails, your feet, they're touching you. They're working in some of the stores, feeding you your food. You don't know what they're putting in that stuff. They're in the massage parlors. I can name the massage parlor. Nurseries and the hospitals. There are witches who practice witchcraft who have been strategic, strategically placed in these places for when you come in. And guess what? They recognize you when you walk in the door. They see you. Hopefully they recognize you. Prayerfully, they see you coming. Prayerfully, they're intimidated by you. And not to the point where it's like, oh, please, it's one of ours. Because demons will call you out. You want to get up there and lay your hands on somebody, demons like, oh, please. Just one of mine. Just with them yesterday. Sit down someplace, you don't have no power. They will tell you that. Come on, somebody. You don't have no prayer life, you don't have no fasting life, you better sit down and get a life, right? <laughs> Build your spiritual life before you dip into that realm to deal with things like that. And so witches, they need to know who you are when they see you. They need to know your name. They need to understand. And the network will speak to them. The demons will speak to them and say, don't mess with them. They belong to God. You, you can't do anything with them. No, they are real Christian. There's a guy named John M Ramirez. He practiced witchcraft. He talked about it in his YouTube video. It's incredible. He said that they, as Satanists, used to come to churches to shut churches down. They come to church also to recruit, just like they went to the club to recruit. Stay out of the clubs, y'all. Lounges. We went to get something to eat last night when we left here. It was a, the name sounded good. It was called A Touch of Italy. We ain't know nothing. We just pulled up. We could smell the, what was we at, Bedford? We could, the food smelled good and we pulled up. When I got out the car, I said, that's weed. That ain't food. Then, um, then they start getting out the cars. Then the guy was standing there with the wand. I was like, this is a restaurant. Why is he frisking people? And then they just started walking in. I was like, what in God's name? <clears throat> it's like, no, we, we, we can't go in there and eat. Right? Yeah, we went. Yeah, we did. We must did. Right? That witches are at Cleveland is and 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 um, flooded with it, and it is their domain. There's a particular massage parlor. Do you remember the name of it? What's the name of it? Bodhi Tree. Yes, Bodhi Tree is a massage parlor. I think a lot of them are on the west side. Do not go there. Ask me why. Because they practice what is called Reiki, which is witchcraft. So when they're massaging you, they're doing rituals on you. And you go home and you're like, why do I, what's going on? Something just not right, right? Um, so you have real witches. Then you have um, 
Sometimes they'll come inside the church. They, they cast spells. They use what is called a cauldron. You know what a cauldron looks like? It's a big pot. And they use it to mix their spells and stuff in. They sell them in toy stores now for children. They, put, they wrap their, their pink. And they sell them to kids and Ouija boards. They sell them in the toy store so you can run to the, your kid be like, I want, I want a Ouija board. Right? These are real witches that deal with herbs, rituals. You can, you can see them in how they dress. Sometimes they will come to church and sit quietly in the background. Right? And they'll just sit there and they'll observe because they're monitoring what's going on. While I'm sitting here talking, if you feel fidgety or you start yawning, it's okay. <laughs> All right? Then you have other witches that don't realize that they're operating in witchcraft. Somebody say preach, Bishop. You don't realize that you're operating in witchcraft, but you come to church with your saved self and anointed self. But every morning you pick up that paper to, to read your horoscope. You, you're dealing with the astrologers. You're looking at the stars and you're, 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 you're maneuvering your life through the stars because you are an Aquarius. We cast out a demon. We cast out a demon we, and we ask that demon, what is your name? Because that is biblical. What is your name? That demon said, my name is Sagittarius. Because when you call yourself these things, you take ownership of it. And that thing brings you to a false identity. So when you pick up the newspaper, oh, that is my day. No, that's not your day. You just read that, and now you're going to make that your day. That is not your personality. And so you have people in the church walking around with, this is the age of Aquarius. That's who I am. No, you're not. Right? They are looking at the horoscopes, psychic readings. Anybody ever been to a psychic in here? Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed because you need deliverance. Yeah, but you already been delivered. Psychics, be careful. There are prophetic psychics in the church too. Spiritual gypsies moving from place to place trying to lay hands on folk. Because we have become prophetic junkies. I just need a word, doc. Come on, just a word, man. Please, I give you a quarter. <laughs> just running from place to place to hear a word. Be careful whose table you eat from. cannot eat from everybody's table you will get spiritually sick and when you're running from table to table to table to table you're taking all these spiritual advice from all these people you're going to wind up with spiritual schizophrenia you ain't going to know whether you're going or coming you ain't going to know whose voice is real what to believe find you a house that's teaching sound doctrine and sit down and learn and if you feel like you have spiritually or you have intellectually gone past that ministry that doesn't mean it's time for you to leave it means it's time for you to teach preach bishop oh I am it means it's time for you to teach since you got this level of revelation go to leadership and say hey God gave me this can I teach this that's how you do that and if leadership says not yet you just sit back and just pray and say, say, God, open up a door so that I can teach this. Maybe it's not time for the ministry to get that yet. Maybe they can't handle it yet. Some of y'all, if I told you stop drinking Starbucks coffee, you'll lose it. You'd be like, uh -uh, don't bring him back here. But you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes, right? How many of y'all love Starbucks? Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. Don't be it's crazy. I had all this stuff. I had the app. I had the points, the cups, the car. I had everything. I was a Starbucks junkie. I wake up in the morning like this. I just need some coffee. <sighs> had no idea what was happening. I was coming into a covenant with the Marine Kingdom. Right? Crystals. You see people with crystals around their necks talking about, it just brings me tranquility. No, it's bringing you a demon. We don't worship crystals. Crystals don't give you power. Crystals don't calm you down. Crystals don't help your anxiety. That's another form of witchcraft in the pews. Right? Burning sage. No. You can't get rid of no demon with no smoke. 
You're going to cough up in that joint. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> you can't get rid of burning sage. Burning sage actually invites them inside of your house. That's what it does. If you bring them in. I saw Kyrie Irving, the basketball player for the Brooklyn Nets. He was in the arena, burning sage in the arena. Right? Just burning sage. Talking about, I'm trying to get rid of all the evil spirits. You ain't getting rid of those spirits. You just opened up the floodgates in this stadium. And I'm going to tell you why he wasn't right in the first place. Because I got a picture of him. He was doing an interview. And he got the, the circle with the star in the middle of it on his, tattooed on his hand. The pentagram is on his hand telling me that you worship Satan and now you burn in sage because that's what they do. But in the church, I had pastors fighting against me. I mean, my ancestors did this. I said, and your ancestors were demonic. Our ancestors were Egyptian and they practiced witchcraft. It don't matter. Come on, somebody. Oh, Jesus. Consulting mediums. I just need to talk to my great aunt because she had a million dollars here someplace. And if I can talk to her, maybe I can have a conversation with her. I can find this money. You're not talking. The Bible says the dead knows nothing. Right? You are talking to a familiar spirit that knows your bloodline. It's been up and down your bloodline. It knows everything. It knows when your aunt passed away. It knows what she had on. It knows the things that she used to say to you. And so you're like, oh my God, that was her. Oh my God. How much money do you want? And they're like, well, I got some more information, but 50 more dollars and I can give you where the money's at. And they just keep milking you and milking you and milking you. Right? In the church, y'all, ancestral worship. Your dead ancestors is not coming back to tell you nothing. They don't know nothing. They're not coming back. They're not guiding you. So we go to see, oh, Jesus, I'm about to mess up again. We go to, I'm going to see Wakanda forever. Did I say Wakanda? <laughs> what, what's the name of it? Wakanda. <laughs> Jesus, I think I'm in the hood. We go, go to, we run to see these movies and they have all this ancestor and they go our ancestors are leading us and guiding us and everybody's have you noticed everybody's talking about it now our and my ancestors takes everything totally away from God it's ancestral worship they're not talking to you once again that is demons familiar spirits who know you I worked with a girl what time is it I, I was a young lady called me she was like I need, I need deliverance. She lived in St. Louis. She said, something's going on. I need deliverance. So I'm on the phone with her, right? This is one of the craziest things that I was witnessing. So I'm on FaceTime. Where I said, let's get on FaceTime. We can find out what, these, what this demon is doing. It wasn't just one. It was 11 of them. So we're on FaceTime with her. And so she's, um, she, as she, soon as I got on the line with her, um, immediately she got a headache. Immediately her head started hurting bad. She started feeling aches in her body. And that was the demon saying, get off the phone with him. Don't talk to him. Then they started talking to her. And I was like, what are they saying? They're telling me to hang up the phone, not to talk to you. Not to believe you, not to trust you. I said, okay, that means I'm still saved. Okay. So I'm, I'm working with her. Now the lights are flicking on and off in, inside, of the, inside of her room. Right? Just going on and off, in and out. Her boyfriend that she was living with, he um He's now he's fighting against Christianity. He doesn't, none of it. He's, he doesn't want to go into church the whole nine yards. Where she lived at, there were no deliverance ministry. I couldn't even find one. I was calling over the city, trying to find a deliverance ministry to send her to. I couldn't find one. Because churches don't want to deal with deliverance no more. All they want to do is come inside the churches. I'm a title. I'm a apostle. I'm a prophet. I'm a bishop. I'm this. I'm that. I don't care about people being free. It's about money. Break you. you bring that money inside of the house of God. We're trying to build this big cathedral. I know it ain't no power in it, but we're trying to get people in it because it's about success and things. And I'm going to show people that I'm blessed because I got stuff when all 10,000 of y'all are on your way to hell. So you can't find anybody, any pastors that's going to get down there and work with them. And so we in church for four hours, right, Drew fam? Laboring at the altar for people. 
bed for four hours. Forget about football. I just look at the highlights when I get home. We're laboring. And when we, when we finish, we're tired. We've been to war. We've been to church. But it's not like that today. So she couldn't find a place to go to. So I'm working on the phone. And now these 11, these, these spirits are drawing pictures on the wall. Very good artist. Drawing on the wall. They're snatching the covers off her bed. They're doing all kinds of things. And she spoke seven different languages. <laughs> and it wasn't the Holy Ghost. It was different languages. So I was like, what did you do to cause all this to come in like this? She was looking for acceptance from someplace, looking for a religion to practice. And she ran into a ancestral priest who took her through rituals. When he took her through rituals, it came in immediately. Ancestral worship. She got her certificates, oh, the whole nine yards. She also got 11 demons with her. So she said, I keep hearing the word nut, 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 N-U-T, N-U-T. I said, okay. Yeah, ancestral, Egyptian, Egyptian goddess. On her leg, she had a tattoo of the Ankh. You know, the cross with the circle on it. The cross that people talk about, this is from my ancestors. It's witchcraft. Right? She had that tattooed on her. Like, I'm sealing. This is my seal. This is who I am. She had 11 of them. Isis, all of them. Right? Very, very rough case because of the open door that she opened through what? Ancestral worship. And the priest laying hands on her. And he was from the tribe of Yoruba. Yoruba. Yur Right? And that tribe, Yor Yor Yoruba, from Africa, is extremely wicked. How many of y'all wear waist beads? Y'all ain't raising your hands? If you wear waist beads, I know somebody taking, oh, your kids went around with them, snatch them off now. Waist beads. Um, they tell me they use them to, I'm measuring my weight. Uh -uh. I make them myself. Don't matter. Snatch it off. You'll hear some things that's going to kind of shock you a little bit, right? Down to the jewelry, down to the makeup that you put on. Wayne, can you touch on those things? Jewelry, makeup. I'm telling you, your feelings going to be hurt. But this ain't, this ain't just from here. Say this is revelation, and this is from experience of things that we've seen. Okay? New age terms like, I'm not feeling your energy. You messed up my energy in the room. Now, I don't go around nobody that's not feeling my vibrations. What? These are new age terms, right? The third thing with that is, then you have the witch that come to prayer, that come to Bible class, that's here every Sunday, that work on the deacon board, that lead people into worship. Oh, my God, they lead people into several auxiliaries, but the whole time your mouth is on the ministry and the pastor. You're a witch. You are a witch. When you are tearing down your ministry with your mouth, you are practicing witchcraft. Sometimes you know it, and sometimes you don't. When you try to destroy a ministry or the man or woman of God with your mouth, go back to a place of repentance. Apologize before God gets a hold of you. You have opened up a door to yourself. Preach, Bishop. Oh, I am. <laughs> Your mouth. I don't like them. I don't like the way they did that. You're not the pastor. You're not the first lady. You can't even handle that position. You don't know what, that, what they go through, what that takes. You know the stress that we go through trying to lead people? What? The spiritual attacks, the natural attacks, the mouth. Whenever any of our prophetic dream is in, when you have a dream and you see your leadership and dream and you see somebody pointing a gun at them and shooting at them, that means somebody's mouth is on the ministry. 
If it's a short range gun, like a pistol, it means that the person that's doing is right in the vicinity. If it's a rifle, it means that it's a sniper. <laughs> that somebody is far away putting their mouth on the ministry and the man and woman of God. Y'all got that? That is a form of witchcraft, which are my why? Because you're casting spells out of your mouth. Lead the ministry. I don't like them. I don't like what they did. You don't have a prayer life. And so what happened with this type of witches, they do this. They was like, well, since I don't like what they did, then I'm not paying my tithes. I'm not giving my money to that ministry. So now you withhold your money because your money becomes your power because it's all the anointing that you have. It's your money. I'm not going to give to them. I'm not going to sow into this ministry. You ain't hurt nobody but yourself. Except the Lord builds the house. They that labor build in vain. God does this thing. So God is not going to let the ministry go under because you decided that this mind giving them nothing. I don't like them anyway. I know how people do. And you hurt nobody but yourself. This is a form of witchcraft in the pews. Are you... <laughs> Because you feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna kill this ministry with my resources. I'm not gonna give, I'm not gonna supply them with anything. Right? Very, very dangerous, right? And I don't say to anybody, well, if you don't give, God gonna get you. I don't have God on no leash like that. Sick him, Jesus. No, we don't do that. I say, God, bring them to a place of repentance. What God does with you, He does with you. Right? And many people, a lot of times they've lost their jobs or there's a hole came in their pocket, right? And what always happens is this, is that people will eventually, as long as you keep your integrity, come back to apologize. And you should go back to apologize. Come on, somebody. I'm sorry. I, sh I, I shouldn't have did that. Let me tell you something. Unforgiveness, you are not going to heaven. You're not getting in. How can you say that, Bishop? You don't have heaven and hell to put somebody in. The word of the Lord says, if you can't forgive your brother and sister, I'm not going to forgive you. Unrepented sins, you're not going to make it in. Come on, somebody. This ain't no once saved, always saved. Where you, you can do whatever you want to do, and I'm still going to heaven anyhow. No, that's not holiness or hell. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Right? So you got to forgive. You got to go back and you got to get it straight. Even when you leave a ministry, you got to leave right. Sit down, have a conversation because you could be wrong. Convincing people not to follow the vision is witchcraft. All right? The next one I want to deal with is one that we recently discovered was attacking our ministry. It's a tortoise spirit, snail turtle. Let me read it to you. And if, when I finish, if you raise your hand, if you think it's hit your house or if it hit your house house, your home or your life, right? Slow moving animals means you are operating with the tortoise and snail anointing. Sluggish progress or none at all operating at the tail position instead of the head and others share testimony while good things never seem to happen to you if you've had any dreams where you saw a snail tortoise slug seahorse starfish etc then you then know that such a dream is revealing that the spirit of procrastination slowfulness and missed opportunities have attached itself in your life the evidence of these spirits in the, in the dreamer's life begins with an unusual case of laziness and lack of desire to do things that are important. Anybody ever been there before? I just don't feel like it. I'm just <laughs> there are moments where the dreamer becomes extremely overwhelmed because the same spirit reminds the dreamer of many unfinished tasks 
that they have deadlines attached to them. So you start to feel overwhelmed. I can't get this done, that done, this is done. I'm feeling overwhelmed. It's just too much stuff. I'm not going to do nothing. Oh, my God, can I preach? Because I experienced that. It's too much stuff going on. I'm not doing anything. Now I'm going to put myself further behind. Right? Naturally, this spells total frustration for the dreamer. Also, due to the spirit of slowfulness dominating the, the dreamer's life, the dreamer is spiritually programmed to miss great and important opportunities. In fact, they develop a I don't care attitude toward opportunities. I'm done. I'm just tired. Secondly, in reality, no matter what the dreamer is doing, somewhere along the line, they will find an excuse to delay it. Whatever it is that they are doing or procrastinate in getting it done, the dreamer will never be delivered from this unless he sees the origin of this situation as a spiritual and begin to wage spiritual war against the spirits that are attacking them. Right? So this spirit slows the progress of the church down. It sits, it goes in the opposite circle that everybody, the direction that everybody's trying to go in and slows the progress of the church down. It slows the financial progress. It slows the growth down. It sits, it crawls, it crouches. <sighs> Y'all thinking, right? It's just that, it's just why he preaching in my life? You work, 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 work like the spirit of Laban, and you never seem to get ahead. Every time you get $175, one of your kids call you. I need $175, my tire blew. It's like, big. Can't put nothing in my savings. Right? Tortoise slows your life completely down. You're never able to elevate spiritually because of the slow pace that is walking the church in. It attaches itself to the spirit of religion and tradition. It will not allow you to move. It won't allow you to progress. It won't allow you to move forward. It is a moving at a snail pace. Let me raise your hands if you've experienced this. Some of you experience it on your job. You can't move forward. You can't do nothing. You have to break this spirit. You got to go into warfare against it. You cannot allow it to control your life. How many of y'all need a breakthrough? Come on, somebody. To get a breakthrough, you got to break up with some stuff and some people. You need to get a breakthrough. That's the only way you're going to break out is to break up with some stuff. And these things that have attached themselves to you and your life, and some of them have attached themselves to your bloodline and your generation. Everybody in your generation is broke. All your family members, nobody graduated from high school. Right? Nobody. Nobody's in your, in your bloodline that's married. Or they're all divorced. No, none of the marriages last. A pattern of you jumping from church to church to church to church like a spiritual bunny rabbit. Patterns, y'all. Watch your patterns. Right? The last one I'm going to talk about real quick is the mermaid spirit. Somebody say mermaid. Marines, how many of you have heard of marine spirits? Raise your hand. Okay. Marine spirits are the princes and princesses of the sea. I know some of y'all, but that's not true. Listen, the lost city of Atlantis, y'all, is real. Oh, I'm, I'm not coming back here. I can see that right now. The lost city of Atlantis is a real place. Hollywood knows it's real. They've been dropping bombs in the ocean recently. What are you dropping bombs in the ocean for? It's real, y'all. What you see on television, what you think is play for play play, it's real. Write this scripture down, Ezekiel 26 and 16. Go and read it. This class of demons are responsible for all the whoredom our world is living with today. They perpetuate the highest level of wickedness against mankind in the form of filth, defilements, sexual bondage, depravity, marital breakups, and delusionists. Apart from the very visible penetration of marine spirits in our society today, they influence the music, 
They influence the fashion. They influence the film industry. These spirits also oppress people to, uh, by coming to have sex with them in their dreams or even claim to be married to them. Ooh, Jesus. Spirit spouse and spirit wives. I'm, I'm not going to go deep in that because Wayne can talk about that. They come in your dreams. How many of you have had sexual dreams? Raise your hand where you've had sex in your dreams. Right? Don't be ashamed. How many went through with it? No, don't, don't go right there. <laughs> they come to you in your dreams with sex to establish a covenant with you. So when you have sex, you establish a covenant with them. You marry them. Sex consummates a marriage. You're not married until you have sex with that person. So if you marry them and y'all don't have sex, why did you marry them? Right? That consummates the marriage. Same way in the spiritual. When he comes to you and, and, and he has a dream with you, he's now in covenant with you. Y'all have a covenant. And so uh, one part of things when it comes to deliverance that Wayne is going to take us through, he's going to make sure that y'all take off all the rings of the times that you have had sexual dreams and the people that you have slept with before you met your kingdom spouse <laughs> that you've been with before your kingdom spouse and you, was, you just broke up with them it was like we just stopped I went and moved on to somebody else did you renounce that relationship because when you had sex with them you married them I just felt a quickening in my spirit there's, a, there's still a covenant there I don't care how far I go back and so now you at home, you in the bed, and something climbs on top of you, and you can't move, and you can't say Jesus out your mouth. You're like, what? And your spouse is laying next to you. And you in the bed struggling like nobody's business. You're like, yo, what is going on? What? Be quiet. Because that spirit spouse is attacking you. The spirit spouse does not want you to be married. He will let you move around from place to place, from guy to guy or girl to girl, but he doesn't want you to be married. He will run every good guy that comes into your life away. I don't want you to marry them because I know they're the real deal. That's your kingdom spouse. I'm going to keep them away. So he will come in and cause arguments, wreak havoc, so that you will push them away from hurt, rejection, abandonment, all the things that you dealt with, right? That's why you got to be careful. That's why you got to renounce. Mermaid spirits, y'all. It's so much to this mermaid thing I could talk about, but I'm going to move forward. If you ever hear mermaid or mami wata, M-A-M-I space W-A-T-A, is a mermaid-like figure. So let me describe you the mermaid, then I'm going to move on real quick. Matter of fact, there's some other things I want to talk about, but I'll move real quick because we got some more stuff to do. The mermaid spirit, the, the marine kingdom has everything to do with the banking system. Have you ever noticed with your money it's currency, like the current, or we're going to liquidate your funds, liquid? The marine kingdom controls all of that. They control Hollywood, they control the music, they control everything, right? Why? Because the earth is 70% water. So is your body, right? So they, 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 they manipulate everything. What you think you're doing on your own, they're manipulating, they're programming you to do. The fashion that you put on because they control the fashion world. You see these guys come up with all these tight suits now with no socks on and they're flooding. That's the Marine Kingdom. Metrosexual clothing. You better put a suit on that fits. That's your little brother's suit. Take that off. Right? That's the Marine Kingdom. All the young girls now run around with their shirts cut off right here with their belly button showing with a belly ring in. I'm not going to even go there. They want their stomach showing all the time. So what? You got a six pack, your stomach flat. Nakedness. That's the Marine Kingdom. The guys walking around with their pants hanging off their butt with their crack showing. Marine Kingdom. That is their doing. That's their manipulation. You think, I'm just being me. No, you're not keeping it 100. You're not being you. You're being programmed to look just like 
what they want you to look like. Yes. Skirts. They wear dresses. Why do all our black men got to put on a skirt in Hollywood and run around in a skirt and, and a wig and stuff on? And then, if you've been paying attention, once they do that, they blow up. Ooh, Jesus, that's a whole nother place. Right? So this spirit runs everything. So you got to be careful what your kids are listening to, what they're doing. I just re recently posted something. It was a Christmas special on TV. And the, what you call them, the, um, what was it? The kids spell, I love Satan. Now, it was supposed to be Santa, but I guess they made a mistake on television with six million viewers. A mistake, right? So now that's programming the minds of the kids. They put it on television. Disney is wicked. The Disney Channel is wicked. Do not take your kids, sit them in front of the Disney Channel, and turn it on and go cook. You can be like, yo, what's, what's wrong with you? Why you keep crying? Teamwork, y'all. Somebody say teamwork. I want, I want to deal with those four things. I want you to understand them. I need you to go research some more on your own. But I need you to understand those four major things attack ministries big time. They attack the house of God. They don't want it going forward. They don't want it moving, right? So I need, how many of y'all operate in intercessory prayer? good. To effectively pray, you have to understand what you're fighting against specifically. You are praying against a religious spirit, and it's not a religious spirit in your church. It's a spirit of lust that's coming from the head on down. And so you're fighting against that. Oh, it's in leadership. There are some churches that you come into, you ever been inside a church and it's just it's just full of adultery. Everybody's cheating on one another. They're like wife swap. Right? <laughs> they just all, everybody's doing it because the head is doing it and he allows it, everybody else is doing it. Then you go in some ministries and it's about, you can't preach unless you have a PhD in the pulpit. You ain't got no anointing. You can't cast out a dead gnat. You can't raise it. You can't do nothing. But you got a PhD, so now you're qualified to preach. You're not even called. But your education is your power. It's your anointing now. Look who I am. I got a PhD, a Dem IA, a LAD behind my name. All these acronyms, right? But the church, but you have no power. There are churches, so these spirits that reign in church, and I want to call names of denominations, but there are certain denominations that education is very, very important. They have doctors in there. They have lawyers. They have politicians inside of this particular denomination, right? And uh, I can say it, please. And too many people listen to me. The AME Church. That's, that's who they are. They're Masons. Masons. They're they're big on their fraternities and sororities. I'm an AKA. I'm an alpha dog. I'm a Q dog. They're big on it, not realizing that you're in a covenant. Right? And so the church operates just like that. So you have to know what you're praying against. Somebody say teamwork. teamwork. First word, trust. trust. Right? Trust among your team is critical. I'm a real quick. Consistency, loyalty, delegation, trust. Consistency, loyalty, delegation. My team always gets on me. You need to delegate. You can't do everything. I was like, I got you. Okay, right. You know, you you started a ministry. You used to doing everything. May God send you people. You got to start relinquishing, right? So that's trust. The second one, E, is economy of energy. Economy of energy. Let me explain to you what I mean. Even a thoroughbred horse can't run at full gait all the time. 
You got to slow down. You got to take a break. You got to go on vacation. My church recently gave me and 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 First Lady Pastor Zimmer an all expense paid trip to Destin, Florida. Everything. All we had to do was just show up. Right? Why? We needed a break because we go at full steam ahead. I go at full steam ahead. I just coming through. Two 90-day fast I put myself on. Full steam ahead. Every Tuesday night we praying. And not just, Lord Jesus, there's a lily in the valley. No, we're, we're going into warfare. So it is intense. Right? And I was, I don't think I told the church, you know, after Tuesday night prayer, I, the enemy woke me up in the middle of the night. And I was going to sign my band, there was a witch standing right there. If I was to saw it on the street, I'd be able to recognize I'd be able to say, that's who was standing by my bed. I'm just trying to figure out whether it was astral projection or just a spirit that showed up. But it was standing on my bed, and it screamed at me. Ah! This was after Tuesday night prayer. It screamed at me. I just looked at it like this. <laughs> I felt a Denzel Washington moment. You. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting cases on all y'all. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, you didn't show up by my bed, right? And tried to really intimidate me and scare me. I mean, I saw it because I told the Lord, I got seers in the ministry. God, that ain't my ministry. <laughs> I don't need to see nothing. You gave them to me. I'll ask them. But I saw it, and I was like, I'm Jesus, Right? So I was like, okay, that was intimidation from that prayer on Tuesday night because we went in, right? So you can't run at full speed. A, somebody say A. A. Affirmation. Everybody is hungry for affirmation. When you don't get it, they get cranky. It's amazing how a smile and a simple word of encouragement can change a team member's entire day, right? Value their ideas. Two, appreciate their uniqueness. You not like me and it's good, so it's okay. Three, commend their efforts. Good job. Even though you failed, good job. <laughs> Number four, praise their loyalty. Because they don't have to be there, they're doing it for free. Affirmation. M, management of mistakes. Proverbs 24 and 16 says, even though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. It's okay to fail. Become a successful failure. Bishop, what are you talking about? In other words, learn from your failures. There is success in failing at something. You learn from it. It's experience, right? That's the M. W. We at, we at the W now. Right? S meetings, like staff meetings, weekly staff meetings, right? Which sometimes we're so busy, I can't even do with the staff. Weekly staff meetings, come together, talk. Your units, come, your, your auxiliaries, come together and talk. The pastor doesn't always have to say, hey, set up a meeting, hey, do this, come together. As an intercessory prayer team, hey, y'all, what, what can we do to take the load off of the leadership? We, I want to show them that we're praying behind the scenes. I want to show them that we're with them. What can we do as a team? Let's do this, right? That's good, Bishop. Thank you, Rick. Oh, open communication. Somebody say open communication. Number one, presumption. How many people have been caused by the phrase, but I assumed? I mean, problems, but I assumed. Right? But I thought, never assume, always get the information. Uh, uh, impatience. Impatience ruins open communication because we are more interested in what we are going to say than listening to what others say. Number three, pride. Jesus. When you think you know it all, you are resistant to feedback and you become defensive instead of really listening to others learning. Aura, recognize and reward. 
This is how you keep the enemy out of your house. Recognize and reward. The more credit you give to others, the more you develop team spirit. It's that simple. The Bible says in Romans 13 and 7, give honor and respect to all those to whom it's due. Okay? Last one. Keep on learning. Somebody say keep on learning. Keep on learning. Jesus keep learning, y'all. All leaders are learning. The moment you stop learning, you stop being a leader. The moment you stop learning, you stop being a leader. Proverbs 18 and 15 says, the intelligent man is always open to new ideas. In fact, he looked for them. Do you do that? Never stop learning. Never stop taking revelational information. Amen. I got more, but I'm going to end right there. Right? I want to give you a little bit to prepare you for what's going to happen so that you'll understand. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Real quick, are there any questions? Any questions real quick? That means I explained myself really good. Okay, let's give the Lord a hand praise for First Lady. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Wasn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Did anyone learn anything today? If you learned something, raise your hand. What did you learn? I want to make sure that everybody's getting something. So today I learned about all the um, four ways of ministry is attacked. So I wrote down division, Jezebel, witchcraft, um, torture spirit, and lonely spirit. Or a snail spirit. pick on the rest of you. <laughs> All right. So I did want to share with you how we got here today. Um, we were here, we've been here a couple of times this year. And uh, when we were here in, I want to say it was when we were here in May, um, we noticed, we felt a heaviness as soon as we came into Cleveland, we felt a heaviness, like something was sitting on not just the city, but on us. So we can literally feel the heaviness. So we knew it was something spiritual. And we started having conversations with different pastors in the area. And they said, yes, it's, it's demonic activity that is here in this city and we need to do something about it. So we showed up here uh, on one of the trips and we had a conversation with the Christians and they were like, yeah, we, we wanna do something about this and we wanna bring more pastors and more churches together so that we can combat against the enemy and what they're doing with the city. And then in 20, I'm sorry, in August, on August 26th, the Lord spoke. And the Lord said, Ohio. Now, I knew about Cleveland, but the Lord said, Ohio is in need of you. 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 That was four times. Four times. So as we, as we were, as we heard the word, the Lord then spoke and said, I asked, well, when should we go back? What should we do? And of course, it was a, de a deliverance encounter. 
is what he spoke back. And then I was like, well, when? He said, as soon as possible. I said, well, what is as soon as possible? And um, he said, December. December is a weird time for me in this area. <laughs> because we never know the weather and what's going to happen. The last time we came in the winter, it was snowing, and it was almost like a blizzard to us, and we were just not accustomed to being here. But if the Lord said, do something, I'm going to be obedient to what he's saying. So we watched the weather, and we are here. We just want to make sure that um, each and every one of you, when you're walking and you're living throughout this life, please look at the little things. There's subtle things that will be attacking you in your dreams, in the things, even the things that you eat, the things that you put on your body. You got to be very, very careful in the subtle things. And the things when you wake up and you, or you wake up and you're like, wow, I, I just feel depressed. All of a sudden you just feel depressed. That's demonic activity. And it needs to be dealt with. Amen? Amen. All right, I'll come back and talk to you about that later. But um, let me see. Someone has a question. spirit. I, I had heard something that from the bishop when he first started talking and it came on me and said, oh, wow, yeah, he is gifted. This young man is gifted. And I needed to hear what he was saying. And the spirit of the Antichrist, or whatever you want to call it, came on me and now I'm, I'm wide awake. And it to keep me from hearing what he was saying. You know, to keep me from hearing what he was saying. And what he was saying was uh, very instrumental uh, to me uh, as far as my, my, my learning process is teaching process is that, you know, we do have demons, you know, uh, activities wherever we're, wherever you, we're not protected just because we're in God's dwelling. We're not protected. And I really want to uh, uh, say uh, I hate that that came on me like that. You know what I mean? But uh, I felt like I needed to tell you because now I'm wide awake. Amen. But you were able to feel it. You felt it. You recognized it. And that's what was important. Some people feel things and they're like, oh, this is just how I'm supposed to feel. And they think it's normal. It's not normal. And you felt that it wasn't normal, and you dealt with it. So hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So um, I wanted to share fast duty. When Bishop was speaking, <clears throat> I don't know if he had mentioned it before we came in, but I wanted to share an experience that I had a couple of weeks ago because I like to normally... I'll sleep with the rain um, going on. And I, I came across this uh, video, and I believe it was Dreamscape, and it was showing rain, just, just soft rain, dark screen, and I fell asleep with it on. When I woke up, it was this demonic face on my screen. I saw the, the, the um, eyes, the mouth, a whole big demonic face. I said, devil, you a liar. And I, and I didn't hear him mention that, but I wanted to share because even things like that, sometimes we're not aware that the enemy is bringing those things in our subconscious while we're sleeping. And when I woke up, I saw that demonic face on that screen. I, I called the prophetess Olandi. I said, I normally sleep with the rain, but with this particular station, and I, it was this real big,
demonic face just looking at me while I'm sleeping. Like I'm looking at you. I said, in the name of Jesus. So it's, it's interesting that she said that because we encourage everyone to sleep with gospel music, some type of Christian music on, and even scriptures. You can go on to YouTube and play them, and we do. We pop it up on our screen, on our TV screen, screen at home, and we play that because it fights off the demonic activity while you sleep. And I think I shared this last night, and I'm going to share it again. You'll probably hear it again and again. But one thing that I tend to say before I go to sleep in my in my prayer time is let no spirit but the Holy Spirit speak to me while I sleep. It is extremely important. Put them on notice. They do not have more authority than Jesus Christ. Okay? Amen. Um, prayer. You talked about prayer. We do have prayer on Tuesdays, and if you'd like um, to join us during our prayer, uh, see Associate Pastor Marcia Sattler, can you raise your hand after um, the next session? Um, let's see. And one last thing I did want to make you aware. Normally, I do sit, like, up here in the front. But what I've noticed is, um, no, let me back up. He also mentioned we have seers in our ministry. All the seers, can you raise your hand? Raise them high. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. They actually see demons. They also see angels, but they allow us to know when there's demonic activity in a space, especially where we're teaching and preaching. So since we've been here, they're here. There's arrows pointed at myself, Bishop, and Wayne fiery arrows so while we're in the back it may if you hear anything we're praying we're talking about the things that's being seen so I don't want to distract you but I do want you to understand that we are scanning the room the room is being scanned and when something is seen we're praying as well amen amen all right so next up we have an amazing young lady. She is young, but she is so wise. She is so wise. And her testimony, I, I want to say so much more, but I want her to share with you. Her testimony is just amazing. And I, I just love her. I adore her. And I am so excited to see what God is going to do in her life because she's growing and she's growing expeditiously, meaning she's growing very fast in the spirit. So if you could all rise to your feet as we welcome Savannah Thomas to the podium. And Lord, I just ask you that you guide my tongue and just have it be said exactly as it needs to be said to the people here today in the name of Jesus. And let us all have ears to hear, soften our hearts toward this, Lord. Soften our hearts towards all the knowledge that's being poured out in this house <laughs> and on my father because he ain't heard all of this. But, you know, this, this is the perfect time for him to hear it. They overcame him by the butt of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And God spoke to me, that's the story of Jesus. When we share our testimony, you're sharing, you're sharing the, the story of Jesus because he's a healer, he's a deliverer, he's a redeemer. And that's, that's as powerful as the word of God because the word of God is testimony. Moses, he was given the Ten Commandments, a testimony from the Lord, what the Lord had spoken to him. He wrote that down and he shared it. So that is very important to share what God gives you. And they love not their lives unto death. 
and he told me <laughs> and he told me that this December this December that's what's kind of happening a lot of people going to be coming to the church and um when when uh Dr. Lee <laughs> when he was up here I saw a golden uh gavel like a like a court gavel justice is being served in this hour oh praise God okay so <laughs> New Age, that was where I had started. I started in New Age. I was meditating. We know our cousin, she, she got a yoga, um, and she's a yoga instructor. So I grew up doing that, but I also grew up doing praise dance. And in school, they would teach us, that was actually where I did my first meditation. It was in health class in high school. Um, so, you know, an, the devil comes disguised as an angel of light. I thought I was just healing myself. I was getting, I was getting into shadow work and um, just transcendentalism was also something I had learned in school. And it teaches you about, you go into nature, you isolate yourself in a cabin and you just grow by yourself. Man was not made to be alone. We are social creatures. God wants us to have fellowship. We grow in the church, not alone in your room. And, and God spoke to me when he gives you things. Again, that testimony. I have to share my testimony <laughs> whether I want to or not. As Bishop was saying, he has to be here whether he wants to or not. Because it's for the greater good. It's selfish of you to keep that in. And it's selfish of you to not share that with the body. And I started to get into tarot as the years were going by. So it was high school. We do a meditation. I'm learning cr about crystals. I'm getting me some rose quartz, black tourmaline, tiger's eye, citron. You know, my, my father, he know, my, he know that I was bringing that into our house. I was burning sage, all that stuff. And I started to get into tarot when I was in college uh, because a lot of things started coming up for me. I was assaulted twice. And I had been assaulted as I was growing up, younger, and just all throughout my life I was dealing with that. But I didn't deal with it head on um, until I got into college. And it, 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 like, it broke me, it shattered me when I went through that. And I started to seek out how I could take control I didn't know that at the time, but that's what God had ministered to me. And I learned about tarot from a YouTube video, from a YouTube video on my recommended. Pick a car. How fun does that sound? <laughs> I get to pick something and it tells me about my life. Okay. I click it. I start to get addicted. I start to get addicted to it. And I'm like, I got to learn how to do this myself. So I go get me a tarot deck. I get Oracle cards. I spent hundreds of dollars on these things thinking it was good, thinking it, all about that self-healing, that self-healing, that you treating yourself. And I also was smoking. <laughs> I was smoking weed. But I was seeing it as a plant medicine. That's what a lot of people will tell you, that, that these things is healing you. They prescribe it. You go to the doctor, oh, I got arthritis. Okay, here's a, here's a car, all that stuff. They, 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 it's going to heal you. Um, so I was doing terror. I was getting into shadow work. But warning comes before destruction, <laughs> Hebrews 2, 2 uh, and 1. And I had taken, <laughs> oh, Lord, <laughs> soften your heart, Father. <laughs> but I had taken acid. I had taken acid with my friends. And I was the only person who, the whole night, I'm over here super self self-conscious of myself. It was not helping me at all, but I thought that that was showing me, oh wow, I have a lot of insecurity. This is showing to be me about my insecurity. I'm so scared of talking to people. I want to hide. I'm shameful. That's a problem. But I was identifying with a spirit of shame and insecurity. That was not me. And it was just manifesting even higher because I had stepped into the demonic playground. So it had even more control over me. Oh, Lord. He just spoke that to me right now. And, and everybody else in the group, we, the whole night, oh, I love them, Lord. Touch them. The goodness of God brings a man to repentance. But the, the whole night, you know, they was over here fiending to get some, something to smoke. And I'm over here like, we on acid. <laughs> I'm freaking out. You know what I mean? Like, I, we already there. 
But they, we went and we got that and we smoked it and it made it even more intense. You know, people will mix these drugs and everybody else around me, they was like, okay, I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired. And I was like, I'm still up. I'm still lit. And I, I go into the, um, I was living in a dorm room. This is my freshman year of college. So 2018 to 2019, that's my freshman year. And I go into the dorm and I'm talking to my friends and, and they're like, oh, this is kind of, I'm like, y'all, I still feel it. And they were like, mm, that doesn't sound good. That's, I don't know, like, that's kind of scary. And the way they was talking about it was freaking me out. So I just went up to my room. You know, everybody else go to sleep. I stay up through the whole night. I, I go to the, we go to get food the next day, you know, everybody dressed down. I'm still in the same outfit from the night before. Um, and God was just speaking to me. I did not see it as a warning at that time, but that was a warning. And I was also a vegan. I had been vegan for four, four years at that point. So my brain was just all sorts of predestined, pre, pre, uh, predisposed to certain things. Ooh, Lord. And so I started also taking shrooms at that time. But again, I would, every time I would do these drugs, I would get these kind of bad experiences and my anxiety would be up. And I just never had a good time on it. So I just was like, all right, let me stay away from that kind of stuff. But mm, anyways, <laughs> so I started to, I, I was in a relationship. <laughs> I was in a relationship. And a lot of the things that I had been dealing with started to show up, like abandonment issues, rejection, the insecurities. And I would be like, oh, well, this is just what happens when you get in a relationship. But um, yeah, and I started to go back into that using um, shrooms and stuff like that to try to get these revelations. It was giving me these false revelations, oh Lord. And um, I had also dealt with that earlier with tarot. I was getting into tarot, and they would give you also those false revelations, and I would be talking to people. I, I predicted breakups, and, and I would tell people, oh, do you deal with this? Do you deal with that, you know? And I would tell them, oh, I'm, 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 God is speaking to me. It's God who's giving me these revelations. Come get your cards read. And people, some people would even look at me like, I'm good, I'm good, but nobody ever once told me what you are doing is demonic, it's like the Ouija board. I grew up, my grandma, she said that she was doing the Ouija board and it told her, the spirit told her that her grandma was gonna pass away and that weekend she passed away. So I grew up with that story knowing never to mess with stuff like that, but I never connected it because the devil is sneaky and I was tiptoeing into hell. It was baby steps into hell and it all started with meditation and yoga and, and, and all that stuff and then I started doing chakra work. <laughs> I started doing chakra work, your root chakra, your sacral, your heart, your solar plexus, your crown. I knew all that stuff. And, and you try to balance it with meditation. I started to do work on my root chakra. And I saw a demon. And I feel like you probably remember that day because I was like, oh, we got to go get a shaman. Like, it's, I saw something. And it looked like an alien, a shadow alien, a black alien, no eyes, just a black mass. And it was over my head, and it went like, I plead the blood of Jesus over my tongue. Wah, 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 like a radiating wah, wah, wah. And I had been watching witchcraft videos on YouTube, and they spoke that if it sounds like that, it's bad. But you, if you hear a ringing in your ear, or you hear birds chirping, so they be hearing in the spirit, but they be hearing, it's all demons. But I was like, okay, so this is a bad spirit? I need to address this. But um, So I, I turned on Archangel Michael... <laughs> Archangel Michael prayers, but he did cast out Satan. So, <laughs> but um, in the in the book of Revelation, but um, he battles Satan. But I, yeah, I was putting on that Archangel Michael stuff. But then God just kind of led me to put on like Psalms and other scriptures on there. And then just with time, I got the revelation, and He sent to my YouTube video again. He sent to my YouTube recommended of Jessica Joy. Uh, she has a video, it's titled, How I Was Deceived in My New Age Beliefs. And I saw a picture of chakras on there. And I was like, wait, that's what I'm doing. What's new age? I watched that video, changed my whole life. That was 2019. I threw away the cards. I threw away the oracle decks, the selenite, 
the sage, the Palo Santo, all of that stuff. And, um, yeah, so, but I didn't get delivered. I didn't get saved. <laughs> I just knew that God was real. I knew that the devil was real. And, but I didn't get delivered. So that's when I get into that relationship. And these things start to show up. So I'm, I start to uh, go into this, I need to do better. I need to heal. So I started to take shrooms microdosing it. I was never the type to do the godly heroic dose because I struggled with that control. So I never wanted to be out of control. But one, and, and this was also YouTube. <laughs> All of this YouTube. God didn't save me through YouTube. The devil didn't had his way on YouTube. <laughs> but, um, but again, the Holy Spirit, he's stronger than any spirit. Amen. But um, so, <laughs> so I was taking these uh, shrooms as, as advised by YouTube psychologists that said it could cure bipolar, it could cure uh, PTSD, all these things. Um, and some people even take it daily. I was only doing it like once a month, once or so a month. Um, and this was last year. <laughs> and um, one night I was at a sleepover with my friend and the next day I had an appointment and I was looking up at the ceiling and it was moving. And I was like, wait. It, it, it's, I took it last night. It should be gone by now. But I was like, okay, well, maybe it's just the after effects of it. And then days turned into weeks, and I started freaking out, and my anxiety was getting up. And then a month, two months was passed, and I was just like, this is not normal. I, I, the colors would be really bright sometimes. Um, and I started to look on YouTube for s guidance as to how to get healed. And I would watch all these videos, but they would just give me more and more anxiety because everybody would say, uh, I've, I've been dealing with this for years. There's no healing. There's no cure. It, it only lasted this long for me. But if it lasts this long for you, then you probably got it for the rest of your life and all these things. And it would just give me even more anxiety. Um, and I would have panic attacks. I would, I would be staying up all night. I wasn't able to make music. I wasn't able to do anything. And, and imagine you staying up all night. It's like, oh, I could turn on a movie. But then the, the, it starts warping and all this stuff. And it starts freaking you out more. I just could just, I just had to lay there sometime. And I started to self-medicate. Again, that self-healing. And I was prescribed antipsychotics, a priprazole. Um, they even gave me Lexapro. They gave me a lot of things, but <laughs> thank you so much. I do need water. Hold up. <laughs> but um, where was that? Her prescriptions. So I was prescribed these things for CPTSD, you know, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, and they just diagnosed me with bipolar. I never felt like I had it. I felt like I had borderline. But now, again, all those things are spirits. And even if you do have a chemical imbalance in your brain, Jesus came to heal the sick. There is nothing that under the sun that he can't do. He said he did uh, mi like miracles that were literally like mysterious, like just all sorts of miracles that they he's done so many things that they can't even record it in the Bible. There's not enough pages. He has done everything. And, and, and when we talk about our ancestors, they was doing this stuff too. They the ones who found the weed. They the ones who, who ate the, the mushroom coming out of the cow's poop and, and was tripping like, what is this? You know, this, these are things that our ancestors did. These were the things that the people in the days of the Bible, we still in the days, but the early days, they was doing these same things. That person was battling that addiction to alcohol. That person was, was smoking those things that was causing them to, to get schizophrenic and depressed and all those things. He was, Job literally cut himself in the Bible. Self-harm. That was happening in the word of God. He cut himself. Ooh. He cut himself on the ashes of the, of the house that had crushed his family. <sighs> Nothing new under the sun. So I started to take these um, antipsychotics and anti-anxiety medications, thinking it would help me. That's what um, WebMD was saying. But it started to make it worse. And when I would go to sleep, I would wake up. It would wake me up out of my sleep with a, with a word. 
And one time I even heard, it sounded like a boy say, you know, the S word to me. And, and it was just a lot of demonic oppression. But I saw one video. Oh, bless this girl. Bless her, Lord, abundantly. But I saw this, this one video of this girl. She said, God's healing me. She ain't going to deliverance. She ain't talking about reading a word. Of God. She ain't talking about none of that. But I knew God. Mm, I'm getting emotional. My God is a God of hope. And it's when you get to that low place that he will raise you up. You feel like you go, you hit rock bottom, and then you, you feel like you hit another rock bottom. But he is our rock, and he is our fortress. And it is the goodness of God that brings a man to repentance. And he ministered to me. He ministered to me just this, just this past week, weekend. <laughs> what is the goodness of God? What is that? That's when you have been living your life in sin. When you have completely spit on him. You put the thorns on his head. You put him up on that cross and mocked him. And in your low place, he comes to you. <laughs> oh my, I love you, Jesus. I love you so much. Oh, Lord. Just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me and that you rose on the third day so that I could be free. Because you looked at me and you said that that is my child, and he ministered that to me. When he looks at you, he doesn't see, oh, you watching that porn. you so evil. Oh, you smoking that weed. You, you committed adultery. You killed somebody. You're a serial killer. I'm about to go off. But Jeffrey Dahmer, I'm going to bring it there. He, you know, there's videos of him. He, he repented. He said, I'm going to have to face God. I'm going to have to face God. And people will look at that and be like, oh, he's lying. He's just trying to get a shorter case. God can't. Who was Paul? He was Saul. He was killing Christians. We have to be forgiving. I forgive every single person who laid hands on me. I forgive the people who introduced me to these substances. And more importantly, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, God. Okay. So, this one girl, <laughs> she's like, God is healing me. So, I started to listen to scripture. And over time, I was able to read the word because I tried to read the word. And the words would just warble. <laughs> and I, I, I came into contact with other ministries because, you know, I'm, learn, I'm, I'm, I'm learning about the new age and stuff like that. I'd already been watching these videos. God had got me, but I'd fallen away, right? This was last year. And January 9th, that's what I consider, like, my anniversary with the Lord because that was when I decided to fast for him. First fast I ever took, three days. I call it a communion fast. And, and that's if God leads you to fast, you don't have to do a Daniel fast. You don't have to do an Esther fast. He, he, Esther didn't have an Esther fast. She got a word from God, go on a three-day fast, no food, no water, and that's what it was. And she went on that corporately. That was a corporate fast, the Esther fast. Amen. So, <laughs> and Daniel, Daniel did not go on a Daniel fast. That was a Holy Spirit-led fast that lasted 21 days. He didn't know he was going on a 21-day fast. He knew God said fast, and he did it. Okay. <laughs> so I came into contact with Deliverance Chronicles, Minister Wayne, true fam, with Bishop. And um, they, they were doing a mass deliverance with another YouTuber on, uh, yeah, on YouTube. <laughs> and I had seen deliverances from TikTok. I didn't really understand it too much, but it had planted a seed in me, and this was like I felt God had led me there. Uh, so eventually I got a one-on-one -on -one deliverance, and just ever since then, like, my life is just, uh, ah! <laughs> Yes. Thank you, Jesus. 
If you would have seen me, I literally have videos of me a year ago over the summer just crying in the car, you know, recording video diaries. And, and at that time, I was like, God, I feel so low. I feel so low. I don't know, you know, I'm used to this. This is my normal. You know, I, I had spent 20, I had spent 19 years of my life not telling nobody about being assaulted, not telling nobody so many things. But now I look back and I know that in that moment, God knew I would be here. And I didn't know I'd be here, <laughs> but he knew it. So, <laughs> oh, and um, mentioning the, yeah, like, and just all the revelation that he's given me, the true revelation that he's given me about spirit spouses and all these things. And even at the first conference I did with True Fam, a seer in the church, it's so important to tell your leaders because this is something that I needed to help me get free. And they told me um, that there was a spirit spouse that was married to my hands and I had been free, but it was married to the ceiling. So it, it was still like causing havoc, and it was a monitoring uh, familiar spirit. And they said, you're going to have to pray tonight. You're going to have to go home, you're gonna go into your hotel, and you're going to pray. And I was like, okay, God got it. It's not about me. God got it. And, and I was praying in there, and I start looking at the door, and it start moving, and I'm like, oh, no, Jesus, it's just me in here. But I ain't back down, and I kept going, and I, and I got a good night's sleep. And that, let me tell you, I was worried about sleeping that night. So it, it's, it's a word from a seer in the church that helped me to be set free, okay? Yes, and, and he says we, we, he wants us to relinquish all control to him. Because that is so freeing to know that you're not in control of nothing. Just to know that it's all up to him. And, and, and that's a, even that's a fruit of the spirit, self-discipline. That's what I was craving the whole time. Ugh. And, and, and actually, uh, this person near and dear in my life, they told me, you, you didn't have free will. You weren't moving out of your own free will. Because the whole time I was like, my free will led me here and led me there. But I didn't have self-discipline. I was completely spirit-led. I was completely demonically oppressed. And, and yes, you take accountability for things, but you have to forgive yourself. As in, Jesus, he looked at us and he said, I see my child. Who put their hands on you? Who exposed you to this information? What spirit led this to happen to you? Because he literally says it would be better for you to have drowned than to touch my child. That's in Matthew 18. We are his children. And I just pray, Lord, that you grow our fruits of the spirit, that you grow our self-control, our self-discipline, so that we may be obedient to you, because even that we don't have control over. Listening to you is something that you put in our hearts, Lord. Make our hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. Ezekiel 36, 26, Lord. Make us to be more like Christ. I want to read a scripture before I leave, because this is my favorite. This is my favorite uh, verse, I think, in the Bible right now. But it's 1 John. Ooh, Lord, I'm shaking. I feel the Lord. But 1 John 4, 16 and 17. Ooh. And he wants me to emphasize that, that justice is coming. And any of y'all who have been hurt, he prepares a table for you in the presence oh, of your the enemies. <laughs> it's leaving me. But y'all know the verse. Your enemy's going to be there. When you getting fed, they going to be getting fed that, that dang, I, I hurt them. Dang, I messed with God's child. He's going to let them know, you hurt my child. My anointing ain't on you. Why are you speaking down on it? You what you should be one looking at them instead of being a hater. Uh, okay. And I've seen that happen, y'all. I've been seeing that happening in this hour in my own life. And it's crazy being a year in the faith, and then God will make these promises to you. And you're like, okay, I, I, I believe you. But then when they actually start coming to pass, 
And I'm new, so it's like for me, every time I'm just like, oh my, Lord, you said this to me. What, this person that was, they, they hated on me because I said I wasn't voting for Biden, and they said I was crazy, and they was like, I'm never going to talk to you again, and now they looking at me, and they trying to get back in my life, and it's just like, dang, God. <laughs> but I love them, and I forgive them, and I pray that it's the goodness of God that brings them into repentance, Okay. It, that's not out of bitterness. It's just it is what it is. And, and and we can't be mad at God for his justice. We can't be mad at God for his judgment. Because a lot of us will be like, God, why did you take this person away? Maybe that was his mercy. Maybe that person, who knows what would have happened if they would have stayed on this earth longer outside of God's will. It was their time to go. There's so many things like that. It, God's, God's, his thoughts are not our thoughts. They're higher than ours. His ways are not our ways. And I leave it up to him because he is perfect. And even, oh, Lord, he keeps saying, okay. But uh, he has plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. And in other translations, that's to meet an expected end. When Moses left this world, he was angry. God, God, he, he, had a, he had an anger issues came out. The spirit of anger came out. But the Holy Spirit wasn't around then yet, living in him like it is now, right? But God said, all right, you got to go. Tell the people of Israel what they need to do, and then I'm going to take you out. So he knew he was going to leave. Peter, on that cross, upside down because he didn't want to be uh, hanged like Jesus, still knew he was about to go. Earlier or later, there is, a, there is God will tell you. He will let you know in your spirit. It's, it's your time. You've done what you needed to do. Do I feel you, Jesus? So don't be walking around like, I'm going to just up and die one day. That's a lie from the enemy, and that's something that I carry. That is a, that's a post-traumatic stress disorder spirit. That's a depression spirit. That's anxiety spirit. You, you got to renounce that. and You got to come out of agreement with dying in an extreme accident on some final destination. I've seen every single one of them movies. And, and, and it, has, it, it messed up my brain, and, and there would be these intrusive thoughts of me just dying. You have to renounce that. Get free. Okay, so First John 4, 16 and 17. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, which is to walk in love, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And, and follow my decrees, you will be obedient if you love him. And, and a part of that obedience is to love your brother and sister as you love yourself. How do you love yourself? You, you read the word of God, and then you start to see God in you. And you fall in love with the God in you. And that's another, ooh, okay, we, we go. <laughs> that's another thing he has spoken to me. Sometimes you will be attracted to people in the ministry, but really it's you being attracted to the God in them. So you need to be aware of that and be able to separate that. Okay, so God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. The definition of God's perfection, it's perfection in the Bible is something you grow more and more. When you accepted the Lord as your, as your, as your Lord and Savior, you weren't completely free of all your sin yet. You hadn't been completely delivered yet, but you were still being made perfect. And, and it's, you should never belittle that, okay? Um, so we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Amen. You have to believe that you're going to get to heaven, and he will not tell you, flee from me for I never knew you. Whenever I hear those words, I, it'd be, I'd be on TikTok, so... I be seeing all these, oh, God gave me a message, oh my, if y'all don't, you if, you, if you know the Lord here on earth, on earth as it is in heaven, if you have a relationship with God, you pray, you fast, you obedient, when you get to heaven, because you are allowing him to live in you, he is changing your heart, you are moving and doing what he says, when you get to heaven, you're going to get to heaven, you're going to be let into the gate. He don't switch up on you. He ain't the devil. He don't just bless you and take it away. He don't be like, oh, I don't know you. Who are you? Be fake because he around different people. That's not God. 
Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. Amen. Young people in the ministry, young people have a word in their mouth. Don't discount the young people because they are our future. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give Savannah a round of applause once again. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a break. And we're going to come back at 1 o'clock. You are free to leave the premises to get something to eat. But we also have food downstairs. If you would uh, like to purchase lunch downstairs, it's $5. If you don't have the $5, a donation would be appreciated. And if you don't have the donation, it's okay. All right? We will see you back here at 1 o'clock sharp. Because it's a whole lot that has to be packed in. A whole lot. All right? All right. God bless you all. Let me bless the food. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for all that's been said and done thus far. Father, we ask that you would bless the food that we're about to receive, Lord God. Let it be a nourishment to our bodies, Lord God. But most of all, Lord, bless the hands that prepared it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You are dismissed for lunch. And please, please uh, be mindful of the time. One o'clock, please be back. If at all possible, if you can just go downstairs and eat so you don't have to leave the premises, that would be good. We don't want anybody to get lost out in the street.